Hello, 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 guys! Welcome to this new edition of Mind Podcast. This is Adit Kapadia coming to you on yet another week, a fabulously fantastic political week. And together with me are two of India's finest exit pollsters, opinion pollsters, who are going to break down their numbers. I am kidding. We have invited two guests who get all their elections right, so we did not invite all the exit pollsters of India because they did not get all the elections right. So, but as someone who likes to do sephology, likes to do see. forecast i have a bit of uh, sympathy for them because in india and i've said this 1 million times to whoever will hear it vote share conversion to seat conversion is extremely tricky so you know we make all these jokes and stuff but for the most part people do get the vote shares reasonably right uh, sometimes you will get that wrong also but wahan se aap agar seat mein jaoge it's very hard to do people you know don't answer like that so, you know just basically there are roundabout ways that are used to ask questions and stuff and that is why you see people getting wrong so in the spirit of that and now that we have announced um this election was a mixed bag one but before we get into elections let's introduce today's panelists we have uh, mind podcast champions for first i'll go i'll go with the top right and then i'll go um, in the, in the clockwise order um we have columnist co-host of the india rising podcast and analyst and fellow election enthusiast mohal joshi hello mohal welcome hey adit nice to join back all as always <clears throat> yes and we have another fi- mind podcast returning champion columnist analyst and uh, 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 also an election uh, analyst and this time we are see i i'm keeping my promise with him do not talking about punjab in fact barely talking about <laughs> india north of delhi is rohit pathania hi rohit how do you feel hi adit and thank you for mentioning that again uh, and not even that <laughs> I will not even talk about Rajasthan the first because you will feel that ये 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 कंपाक्ट राजस्थान से शुरुआत करेगा और राजस्थान से हरियाणा और जाट डोमिनेशन तक पहुंच जाएगा। I swear, Rajat, seriously. But let's But talk we, about this later. Okay, before, before we get into all this, I want your both your initial thoughts and then I'll get into numbers and stuff. So thirty seconds to one minute each. Either of you just get me your initial thoughts about each state or what were your key takeaways from it. So Mohal, you go first and then Rohit. I think the key takeaway is that, like, just in five years ahead, like the it was a lopsided three-zero result in favor of uh, Congress. So the tables have turned just uh, this time around. While some were expecting that uh, Chhattisgarh might be retained by Congress because of the huge majority that they got, but uh, surprisingly BJP won, and Madhya Pradesh was always a fifty-fifty. So even the sweep of uh, Shivraj Singh Chauhan and the BJP is like kind of surprising to many election watchers, you know. What do you think, Rohit? Uh, <clears throat> broadly in agreement with uh, Mohal Bhai here. Uh, in addition to that, a couple of things that uh, probably got missed in the larger discussion uh, because of the bipolarity that was perceived is the total collapse of the third front. in uh, all these three states and the fact that uh, there was a significant dent in the way the tribal vote patterns have happened this time unlike say the previous uh, vidhan sabha elections in these states uh, i'm not take, including the northeastern states here because they have a very different pattern of voting but broadly uh, these three rajasthan chatisgarh and madhya pradesh are also now looking like a bell wether in the way certain Uh, categories of voters might be voting in 2024 fascinating fascinating because that is true in special in rajasthan correct me if i'm wrong i think there are there used to be at least 15 to 20 seats that would go to others and third parties and stuff like that um so that that is something else and and, and, and so why do you think the shift has happened do you think that's more polarization in favor of bjp or is it like uh, people are just done with the congress See, if you look at the way the votes have uh, accumulated in terms of percentages, the Congress vote share, frankly, hasn't been disturbed much in these three states. It mm-hmm. is essentially the third vote that has migrated towards the BJP. Now there can be two potential reasons for that. One, mm-hmm. of course, is that uh, the third front candidates uh, do not inspire confidence, and we have to realize one thing: a lot of them tend to be rebel candidates fighting on other party tickets here. right mm-hmm. especially in rajasthan in chatisgarh you would notice that uh, mm-hmm. however even in mp where the base was 
strong in the uh, chambal bundelkhand region or the third uh, front mm. uh, you see a total decimation so this has also got to do with the parties probably that were involved in the third front uh, i mm. take the names of samajwadi party and the bahujan samaj party both of which have frankly been uh, seeing a decline uh, for mm. some time now so no and i'll tell you something else but you said then you hit the nail on the head the decline of the bahujan samaj party and i cannot tell you how an insanely big uh, uh, phenomenon that is of course of course and this is i mean not the only state where we are seeing this happen i mean in rajasthan particularly eastern rajasthan bsp used to get assembly seats this time mm-hmm. uh, either the congress or the bjp got it and they have been reduced to something insignificant in madhya pradesh uh, the samajwadi party disappeared literally right yeah. and the bsp would disappear so clearly the bjp's strategy of uh, you know eating into the third front's vote a trend which you also saw mind you pre 2019 in certain mm-hmm. states has come back True. so that could so clearly one has to understand that there is a shrinking space for the third front in an overall political sense in india and there seems so, to be greater bipolarity that's now probably coming in have so now now that we have said that i'm going to now i'm going to go straight into the numbers and we're going to do a very quirky approach now first we are going to look at the states which uh, the pollsters got the most the most of the biggest surprises and then we'll go to the least surprises right so we'll start with the biggest surprise of them all and i'm going to first show the numbers that came and then the numbers that happened so um let me try and share the screen okay so chatisgarh we were told that the congress in the opinion polls is going to get more than 45 50 seats in opinion polls i understand right many things um here are the exit polls 40 to 50 46 to 56 30 to 40 you see this is what i'm saying each exit poll has a range of 10 seats each and i don't blame them because chatisgarh has margins of 500 700 800 seats ultimately uh, th- this is a very idiotic uh, thing to do but poll of polls 49 and 48 and many people said that they got it right because they took the left leftmost average of one and rightmost average and said are we got the range right but no no one got the range right i am showing you not anyone got everyone broadly suggested that it would be a congress win or something even i thought it would be a congress win but 49 38 the actual results were 54 uh, 35 um bjp had a 13% swing which is insane a 13% swing uh, going in their favor they were at 33% they went but congress only lost 0.8% of the way vote so where does that 13% come from to uh, uh, to broaden what rohit's point was that 13% majority of them came from amit jogi's party matlab it was run by ajit jogi janta congress chatisgarh that had more than 7% vote last time if you look at 2018 there you were 7.6% and that's not even including the votes that he got for bsp jcc and cpi because they were in alliance so unka total would be about 10% that 10% out of that there was a 7 or 8% swing from that vote that went to the bjp apart from that they picked up others they picked up independents and that's how they won and especially the quote and quote nexel belt and stuff the bjp completely dominated this is i think this is the raipur area but the rajanandgaon belt and everything they dominated mm-hmm. so having said that your initial thoughts about chatisgarh uh, mohal you start and then uh, uh, rohit i think you hit the nail on the head that <clears throat> the ajit jogi factor uh, that like that swung the election i mean even like one thing on the th- kola so the third front now this time bjp has uh, done well to corner that vote but i think it's more a national trend we see even i would say like i would go as far as uh, 2017 even like when you start from gujarat and you go to rajasthan madhya pradesh and chatisgarh in 2018 now at, at that time the collapse of the third front and the independents benefited uh, congress more because they got more votes out there i mean obviously the bjp vote did go down in those three states but at that time also there was a trend i think i had written a article on mind makers while the while showing that the third front so now it just like the beneficiaries of the collapse of the third front and independents in 2018 was congress 
however this time the beneficiary is the bjp and i think that's we see in a large uh quantity in both state actually in like i mean i know we'll come to rajasthan later on but rajasthan the congress vote share did go up and mm-hmm. they still lost uh quite a number of seats which shows that uh i mean many times right what happens is like the the vote share kind of uh belies like what happens in terms of seats in the first past the post system so mm-hmm. you got like this quirky results uh, i mean we'll come to telangana and uh, even to uh, uh, rajasthan later on to show like just what happens sometimes correct rohit what do you think uh, uh interesting that mohal bhai brought this up uh thinking about it uh i i don't know if you would agree with this or not but the third front is always a pro- third front vote has always been a problem more for the congress than for the bjp traditionally mm-hmm. i mean that's something that has happened at least in the last 15 or 20 years and ironically uh, whenever the third front collapses the vote very very rarely goes to the congress i think the mm-hmm. only exception that i've seen to this day of the third front vote falling towards the congress have been in telangana and in karnataka so, even there the third front vote has not really gone to congress but sometimes when the third front polls the split helps the congress Exactly. They don't get the, the bipolarity has always helped the BJP. Exactly, and the BJP has over the years excelled in making this any assembly election for that matter a bipolar election. Mm. You know, Uttar Pradesh. You look at uh, MP now. You look mm. at Himachal in 2017. Mm. The third front disappeared everywhere. Even in a state like Karnataka, JDS uh, was nearly rendered ineffective, especially in the old Mysore region by the BJP. of course they lost out in the traditional mumbai karnataka region but mm-hmm. uh, the third i mean the vote has shifted for them and they are also capturing on the trend and probably you know trying to in that case play out accordingly and not hurt sentiments locally because a lot of the third front votes tend to be sentimental vote as i call them right uh, in gujarat you saw it with keshu bappa in uh, karnataka you are seeing it with hd deve gowda and his family so now they have they have been either brought into the fold again or they've been essentially mm. you know made allies in one way or the other mm. now it's to, so this helps the bjp in two ways it lets the third front do all the uh, trash talk so to speak in politics while they themselves look sophisticated and suave in the whole process so i, I mean, i'm going to th- yeah go ele- on wall so elections are are becoming bipolar now some places it's like there is like say in west bengal like the cpm and the congress they like collapse like all their vote went lock stock and barrel to the uh, like the mamta's party right so, mm. uh, so the thing is like it's like not like it always helps the bjp it does help non bjp parties but like like for example like it's like the tmc benefited so i think it's just like people are voting for the main two uh, uh, options it can be bjp non bjp i mean if, if let's say like in a place like uh, <clears throat> karnataka where the congress local leadership was is like stronger than like you know the congress leadership nationwide so it does benefit congress it's not like it's not benefiting congress it's the more a factor of congress being very weak in a large number of states which means that it doesn't it's not benefiting from the transfer of, i think people are voting like people used to earlier vote like, as you said like more sentimentally but now people say like okay if i'm voting for like the third or the fourth uh, i mean people are more aware nowadays they don't want to waste their vote like why vote for somebody who's not going to win anyways you know so and i think also that we cannot discount the factor of money power right i mean you need quite a bit of large number of funds to win elections so um, the third earlier people used to get by in winning elections like because like if there was a local popular leader in that constituency or area like you know uh, but nowadays like that also has been overshadowed and people tend to vote more for like larger and more established parties and not waste their vote you know adit yes so Uh, th- that's actually true uh, and, uh, and but i think the the biggest key post this election take away because and that we forget that a lot of people has this is the almost the end of the raman singh dynasty also in terms of his uh, legacy in terms that raman singh has done a good job but many people thought maybe he would have given given, given a last hurrah but vishnu dev sai has been made the uh, cm of chatisgarh Uh, Vishnu Dev Sai is an old BJP face, so it's not in newer faces like we'll talk about in the next uh, 
states he um, he used he was he's been a member of the madhya pradesh legislative assembly from 1990 so he's been an mla for a long time he was also the union minister in the modi government in 2014 he was a minister of state and you know was a member of parliament from raigad as well so he's one of those that came from the mp to the state but um, you know he was elect uh, i think kurkuri is kunkuri is this constituency ha huh. Go on. You know, um, there's an interesting factoid about Kurkuri. Apparently, huh. it has one of the largest churches of Asia. Oh, really? So, yeah. And uh, somebody had tweeted some time back that to nominate somebody who represents a constituency where you have one of Asia's largest churches, physical in terms of physical mm-hmm. presence, uh, it's quite a statement from the BJP side also, and probably an acknowledgement of what went in their favor there. Hmm. interesting very interesting uh but also there are a lot of old bases of bjp coming back bjp making back into the foray into tribal areas that dilip singh judeo uh, old timers would remember he was the old bjp uh, leader in chatisgarh helped so that that was a that was a very uh, very interesting uh, thing but moving from chatisgarh to another state that many pollsters did get slightly wrong mizoram and mizoram gave a surprising verdict as well a first time party the zpm or the zoram peoples movement uh, one so i'm going to show you again in our style uh the numbers and stuff and then we'll move to Rajasthan Telangana Madhya Pradesh obviously um so the most people thought that it would be a hung assembly where zpm uh, got uh, you know 17 or so or some people also gave it single republic tv poll gave zpm less than 12 seats but ultimately zpm got 27 seats axis did get this right so i will give partially uh, they got 28 to 35 on the lower end they got it right but uh, the bjp got two seats um and the congress got one seat and strangely enough congress still got 20% of the vote and just got one seat throughout the state so it was the perennial number two party everywhere or number three party everywhere um uh, the difference between i mean the, you can see the margin was 1% bjp's vote share is concentrated here in the south so it got two seats from there and they are in alliance with the mnf uh, but they all fo- fought Uh, egg election separately in mizoram there are 40 seats but 4000 candidates it's that crazy and uh, not 4000 but at least 400 i'm exaggerating but uh, zpm is very interesting because it's an it's like i said it's a newish party it 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 has opposed a lot of the positions of bjp but then in northeast they have to work with the center so they all move towards the center anyways so having said that your thoughts mohal first and then rohit on this Yeah I mean uh, it's interesting that I think Mizoram was one of the only states where I think Congress was in an alliance if I remember correctly so this is like kind of lar- containing a larger trend of dissemination of Congress completely from the northeast I believe like they are not even in an alliance in any of the seven northeast states and uh, I mean this just makes their harder the job in 2024 harder like if they are not going to be revived in let's say i mean the hindi heartland is kind of out of the question even the north is and it just makes their tough job much harder for 2024 hmm what about you rohit yeah makes sense i mean and if you think about it uh, so couple of observations i think the bjp seat that the sole seat that the two seats of the bjp has won probably has seats that don't have meso concentration in them within mizoram mm-hmm. they might be you know bordering uh, they might be seeds that might have chakma refugee number chakma population numbers and uh, the uh, uh, broop numbers uh, in mm-hmm. higher concentration who have even in tripura been more bjp voters than uh, you know other party voters but mm-hmm. uh, yeah i mean it's you are right i mean they will eventually come towards the bjp but one has to realize that probably one of the drivers here was uh, the fact that uh, Zoran Thanga was a BJP ally, and uh, what was going on in Manipur clearly did have an impact in the mm. way people eventually voted. See, the Kukis are seen as blood brothers by the Mizos. So, uh, that, oh, I did not know. Yeah, well, it's like one one is a bunch of Christians, other is not non-Christian, but they still. Ha, that other. is. Ha, so, uh, so I mean that factor might would definitely have played a role in the way people voted. against zoran thanga who was also seen as you know 
quote unquote a puppet of the bjp and the center right so uh, and manipur being a bjp state right now the perceptions would definitely have played out on the ground uh, of course mizoram is a typical small state in the sense that you know 200 votes here and there make all the difference which is one of the reasons why congress despite all its votes clearly was not having those 200 <laughs> anywhere to get the seats that they wanted so yeah i mean multiple factors and of course i mean also the fact that zoram thanga had been in the power for so long now i think eventually it does catch up with people like they get bored i think bjp was smarter in madhya pradesh not to do, <laughs> let shivraj singh chauhan come forward because so uh, one of our all time favorite journalists and i'm being sarcastic here ravish kumar said that uh, bjp won but shivraj singh lost because of anti incumbency so i think that was a fairly accurate statement to make uh, no it, 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 it is i mean and 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 i personally thought and we'll talk, come to madhya pradesh that the 150 was delivered by shivraj so they they will give him a chance and they'll he'll be replaced 6 months later but um, you know they did not they took a risk for the elections but moving from the uh, you know uh, the in the less right to more right phenomenal we'll go to another election which uh, so now these are tied, Madhya Pradesh and Telangana. So let's talk about Telangana first, because uh, the five Congress people that will watch will say, Are, aapne baat nahi ki. that is why I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let, let's talk a little bit about Telangana. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to share the numbers. This one was very interesting. Telangana, most people were expecting a BRS thing. Now in Telangana, the swing towards the congress was only 6.9 or about 7% and this uh, uh, i'm sorry the swing towards the congress was about 10 11% the swing towards the bjp was 7% but the swing away from uh, chandrashekhar rao was almost 10% so that 10% and so congress and bjp gained combined almost 17 to 18% and where does that come from that comes a little bit from oic that comes a little bit from uh, kcr but that also comes a little bit from other parties and independents yeah. Now, yeah. the Congress party is a non-factor in Hyderabad. You see this small cluster right here? That is Hyderabad. Do you see any Congress blue? No. That is almost 21 seats. Congress is a non-factor in 21 seats out of 117, and yet it ended up getting 64. So it was only fighting this election in 99 seats. right? So before I get into the uh, uh, nitty-gritties of it, your uh, quick thoughts. Uh, anyone, anyone. Sorry, I should have gone. So Rohit first this yeah, time and then no, Mohan. I'll, I'll change up the order. Both no. of you were like, oh, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get that. Yes, no, it's 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 so this was, the long pause was not scripted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. So, Our podcasts no, are never scripted, about, guys. Uh, it's interesting though that the BRS managed to win so many seats in mm. uh, what used to be traditional Congress strongholds in Hyderabad, you know. So, especially places like, uh, even though AIMIM has still stubbornly hold, held on to the seats, uh, at least three or four seats, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, no, seven seats. Seven, yeah. So, mm. uh, they've always been a seven to ten seat party, essentially. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Most people don't uh, remember this. At best, they've been managed to win. The best, the best they've tallied, they've, they've ever tallied in Hyderabad, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, rather, was 12, if I remember. This was the White uh, Party. So, and then they used to be an ally to the party as well, Congress in those days. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you have to realize one thing. The uh, BRS, uh, essentially, mm. and this is something that we've been hearing through the grapevines also quite a bit, was essentially saved by the BJP from complete routing. Yeah. Uh, so, what apparently the, uh, the grapevine is saying is that the BJP decided to sit out on this one instead of going full aggressive uh, and you have to realize how bjp was clearly aware of where the public sentiment was if i'm not mistaken uh, a bjp candidate defeated the uh, sitting chief minister uh, yeah. kcr yeah, yeah we're, we're going to come to that uh, 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 not just the sitting chief minister he also defeated the future chief minister 
yeah on the same street exactly ha uh-huh. he defeated oh. uh, he he defeated uh, kcr and uh, he defeated devendra reddy devendra reddy yeah so kcr no. stood from two seats one is gajwel you know whenever someone uh, fights from two seats that's the one he won and you know even there the number two was etala rajinder exactly who was, was a big openly challenging uh, kcr Correct. for a while that's right so, so that's uh, and Ketar, so, yeah, I think the point like, being huh. that uh, that clearly shows you that the win it was there for the BJP to big, make a bigger mark in the state. Mm-hmm. Though mm-hmm. the lack of campaigning and uh, you know some kind of face saving given to BRS by uh, you know for instance pulling back of uh, Bandi Sanjay from mm-hmm. the affairs of the party in That's the right. state mm-hmm. and uh, just letting you know things waver around for a while. and even the campaigning frankly the bjp was aggressive only in its very last phase when uh, prime minister modi was brought in and the porata arakshana samiti no because they because they probably realized that are bhai we have a chance actually humne galti kar di so be, before i get to mohal i want to talk about three seats which will talk about uh, the issue so first of all you talked about gajwel right gajwel yeah. mein bjp did never contested that seat that's the first exactly. time tdp used to contest and everything 29% vote almost 28.7% for a first time entrant is unbelievable where you have yep. two strong parties right so that's gajwel the second is kamar reddy kamar reddy yep. uh, kv ramanna reddy defeats both kcr and revanth reddy i mean that's <laughs> unbelievable last time kv ramanna reddy the same candidate got 9.5% of the vote this is a swing of 27% yeah so it is it is uh, it is unbelievable what they have done and and this has a significant muslim population as well so yeah. don't just think that they, and and, all, and there was no muslim candidate you know there but i want to talk apart from this i want to talk about the third seat which is nampalli this is in the old hyderabad region now nampalli is an aimim strong seat they used to win this by you know either 5% 10% margin so you have uh, earlier aimim won this by 14000 votes even last time they won it by 10000 votes this time congress got to within 2000 votes Yeah. yeah and they they could have they could have actually taken them down you know with a 1% swing here or there my point is these are seats that were told we were told that mi aimim could never lose right and they almost lost it so Kong, the the crucial the story of telangana for me this time was a the the decline of the TR, brs and the bjp de facto if the bjp in hyderabad if congress is not a factor the bjp is a direct benefit of shri of the brs and if for the muslim vote the battle is between the aimim and the congress in the region that means that the bjp is a beneficiary of the hindu votes in those state seats there are two seats that bjp got more than 50% margin one is obviously gosha mahal which you know mm-hmm. bjp will win even if they don't win anything else in the state uh, rajiv mm-hmm. singh seats uh, <laughs> but other seats also but there is no excuse for them to you know not do well in seats like jubilee hills where azaruddin ran brs close jubilee hills is a very up market seat with some muslim population of hyderabad but has lot of non telugu population also who have previously voted for bjp the part of sikandrabad lok sabha yeah. so why is that happening and that's that's what we got to see so before that uh, mohal first your bjp thoughts. also won one seat in uh, the hyderabad region right two seats two seats okay okay yeah they, the, they that's have, like they won gosha mahal and then they won gosha mahal uh, is a is a certainty uh, wo candidate pe hai wo party pe nahi hai and, and they won another seat i, f- I forget which one but the shocker was they lost amberpet and amberpet kishan reddy is a seat thi kishan reddy ki seat thi which they had won two times and uh, kishan reddy this time was their face so you know they lost by like just like probably ha, so la- last time he lost by 1000 votes and this time they didn't even give him that seat and it was krishna yadav and i think he lost again if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah. no even a seat, seat like kukut palli could have been easily won by the bjp actually absolutely so, absolutely to them Uh, so this is a it's a little little bit of that but uh, so, and as same for sikandrabad but mohal your thoughts before we get into specific seats yeah i think uh, this just shows like large level of anti incumbency for the brs i mean it's kind of surprising that um, like kcr was on like this strategy like he wanted to become a future pm in a third front and he renamed his party from the trs to the brs but now he lost that one state that he was uh, so it's like trying to uh, like aim for like 
higher goals but like you know if you can't even secure your own state then i guess mm-hmm. this will just uh, kill your chances like you know before even if any hypothetical third front would uh, come mm-hmm. on i think also this is like kind of little bit of the like chandrababu naidu like you know where like when he lost like it was said that he was only developing hyderabad and he was neglecting the rest of the state i mean this is like same like it looks like i mean it looks kind of similar that kcr could win the seats in hyderabad like where congress couldn't make a dent but rest of the state like he lost big you know with the huge swing and then i think you also highlighted the the collapse of the third front like because if 17% goes to the two bjp and congress and the uh, brs are uh, only loses like around like 7% it means that there's 3 or 4% coming from the independents and the third parties you know out there absolutely absolutely so so it's interesting that you know the changes are happening but then there are also there are also some seats which um, there will never be any change chandrayaan gutta akbaruddin ovc seat is one um, he uh, he he reduced his margin last time he got 67% of the vote this time he got 65% of the vote so he only won by 53 vote percent vote so there are some seats where you know uh, it's it's like uh, it's like i always joke it's like the republican republic of uh, dk shiv kumar in uh, kanakapura in republic of kanakapura in karnataka that kuch bhi ho jaye dk shiv kumar will always win or uh, oh. mohal will know the republic of ellis bridge in in ahmedabad for bjp <laughs> matlab i i i actually was going through an exit poll data where a pollster actually polled there and i'm like why did you poll i have been <laughs> living there for the last 30 matlab living there for 18 years but now knowing there i i just go around and look around left look around right and you can tell bjp will win so it's, it's, i mean last election in gujarat elis bridge i think the bjp guy got like uh, more than 85 86% which means that everybody else combined would have still lost the deposit ha yeah. matlab it was it, it is that crazy so i yeah. mean it reminds me of the thousand lights constituency in chennai ha dm exactly. even even if you even if they put up a donkey on that seat are so. when they won four seats or something right when they were yeah, even they won the thousand about, lights even then yeah. yeah exactly so uh, yeah in 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 elizabeth last time the bjp got 81% vote 80.4% <laughs> so oh. their winning margin was 71% uh, it, it's <laughs> that bad my 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 joke about the congress party is that when in the 1970s they would get 25000 votes and that remain that number for them has still remained 25000 only bjp is used to get 35000 their number has gone from 35 to 65 75 yeah. 85 wo abhi tak maintain hai so aise kuch seats hote hai in india so you know uh, but jokes apart moving on to uh, to the next state uh the state which and and much to know by the way was anyone surprised that revanth reddy was made the cm let's talk a little bit about the cm before we go into mama ji's madhya pradesh that's a very no, good I question no i mean yeah mol pehle aap yeah uh, no i mean uh, he was the leader of the campaign i mean even like as far as 4 5 years ago like what mm. i heard is that um, internally like uh, the congress faction of telangana they saw potential in him and like they were sure that like under him they would do much better i mean after the bifurcation of the state uh, congress was completely decimated in both andhra pradesh and telangana actually the funny part is like even though like congress party did uh, push for the resolution in the parliament for bifurcation of telangana and andhra pradesh i mean bifurcation of actually andhra pradesh i mean they didn't reap the rewards so this is like kind of returning back to the old like YSR days where congress used to comfortably rule uh, telangana so it will be interesting to see like whether uh, revanth reddy i mean it's he has an interesting background right he's a ex abvp and he also was in the tdp for a longer part uh, for few years so i mean it's like actually like you can at least give credit to the congress that like in many states like they have been propping up leaders like uh, who have been like either there's a case of infighting like madhya pradesh or in rajasthan uh, at least they they did put up a good credible leader and they identified like who can win the elections usually like there is a case there where there's after winning the elections there's so much infighting so yet to be seen whether he can hold this st- uh, this st- ship steady for like the next 5 years like aditya mm. interesting uh, Utta, uh before i come to rohit there is a very fascinating trivia uh, uttam kumar reddy the guy who was an, uh, uh, the guy who was vying for that i think he was the one who had said that he will not shave his beard 
till congress comes to power in telangana so i uh, i hope uh, uh, uttam kumar reddy ji got a chance to shave his beard or uh, got a barber to shave his beard but he he made a statement and then after that after i think he shaved his beard he got very angry and he was um, in race for his cm post so there was a fight that broke out between the mlas and uh, congress anticipating that dk shiv kumar had already sent their muzzle there so he made <laughs> sure dk shiv kumar <laughs> make sure all the descent was muzzled and uh, yeah. what is interesting is uh, um congress party for once uh, has managed to you know get back the reddy vote and that is very significant because now they can get they are in in line to get at least eight lok sabha seats from telangana yeah Uh, it's it's good that you brought this point up of the reddy vote in fact uh, some of the bjp support from the reddy community that you could see on twitter has been very frustrated with the bjp for not even making the effort this time in telangana mm. uh, so really a ch- significant chunk was waiting to you know get the right candidates and the right uh, environment from the party in the state to vote for them uh, but you know it's very interesting uh, revant reddy's background It reminds me of a certain experiment that used to be run by a certain uh, top echelon leader of the bjp uh, that mm. helped the tdp sustain for so long and mm. you can clearly see why the tdp survived so long because it ate away into a lot of the bjp core uh, abvp mm. rss workers uh, mm. who essentially got placed <laughs> got mm. placements rather in tdp and mm. as the tdp <laughs> collapsed it has now gone to the congress in telangana mm. at least i don't want to take names but i think everybody got the hint here so uh, that Absolutely. era having gone but mm. uh, you know it's very interesting that revant uh, is seen to be a someone or is being portrayed as someone who's very pragmatic even as the congress party <clears throat> has come up with its typical freebies promises in telangana uh, there are videos of uh, revant reddy going around uh, speaking at some talk show back in the past where uh, he is saying you know you think you will get freebie but in reality people are just taking money out of your pocket and giving it back to you so i mean he's saying that's because politicians will only say what people want to hear so i mean that kind of pragmatism is very rare to hear from a politician that to a student politician uh, that was the yeah. era when the, 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 that that leader is now fb forgotten brother so exactly. uh, if, 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 yeah if 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 you still don't know if you still don't know whom i'm talking about then shame on you uh, so <laughs> anyways uh, uh, <laughs> mov- moving on from the, the, moving on from the uh, and by that by the way bjp last time got 20% vote in um, uh, in united andhra at that time yeah. and that alliance in with in general which uh, and they won four lok sabha seats on their own and that alliance yeah. with chandra babu naidu in 1999 killed them uh, went from although they won seven lok sabha seats it and if them. i'm not mistaken oh, three of them came from telangana that time the telangana correct ha huh. so i mean they would have the bjp would have actually done at least gotten 10 lok sabha seats had they went alone or something because people were tired of chandra babu naidu and because people and forget the anti ram at that time hmm. vijay shanti the actress huh. quit the bjp because of that alliance not yeah yeah not just uh, this time also she quit she she's a serial quitter both are no no she went to congress this time so so yes she is this time was going to do it so wo wo kuch cheeze badalti nahi hai politics mein you know yeah, yeah. iram gayaram can be i vijay shanti kahe vijay shanti i mean however you want to put it this way but that is He's like that uh, is the, uh, sukram of himachal na uh, but at that time ha uh, exactly exactly that's where it came from but mm. no that time there was uh, people so soundarya another popular actress mm. who she tragically died in 2004 while campaigning uh, uh, yeah. uh, another strange victim of helicopter crash uh, yeah. you know uh, somehow it is almost like in 2009 it happened with vyas rajshekhar reddy yeah. uh, in 2004 it happened with soundarya but so bjp had and then they had um, what's his name that famous villain um, kota srinivasa rao who was an M- mla of the bjp uh, then you had krishnam raju again a popular yeah, yeah. telugu star uh, uh, of the bjp so bjp had started making these forays in 90 and atal ji was at peak popularity so honestly if bjp would have say fought 15 seats and given the tdp 25 to uh, a fight and say if bjp would have gotten 10 or 12 out of 15 it was a, you know fayde ka sauda hota jo bjd ke sath arrangement tha but the arrangement that chandrababu naidu game 
नवीन 99 वाज व्हाट नवीन पटनायक गेव देम इन 2009 एंड दैट वाज अ घाटे का फायदा घाटे का सौदा आई एम सॉरी एनीवेज सो कमिंग टू कमिंग टू मध्य प्रदेश दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सो दिस पेज टिल अबाउट 48 आवर्स अगो हैड द पिक्चर ऑफ शिवराज सिंह चौहान टिल अबाउट 48 आवर्स अगो Now the leader of BJP in Madhya Pradesh has changed to Mohan Yadav. So since uh, you are only one letter away from his name, Mohan, uh, why don't you explain about uh, your your namesake? <laughs> It's not Mohan Yadav. Let me uh, clarify. And about BJP's stunning win. Before we get into that, let's look at the uh, polls. Most polls, no exit poll got it right. And I say this with a sense of. Um, responsibility the only exit poll that got it right was chanakya to some extent and access to some extent they got the outer edge right theek hai they were still off by 10 to 12 seats but i will give them that that they got the two thirds majority of bjp right more than two thirds majority and to see the domination of the bjp is this right now every other state congress actually won little bit of votes here there like they were like within 3% for madhya pradesh there was a solid 8% gap between congress and bjp the 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 what you may call the separation was almost 30 lakh votes so it was it was an unbelievable unbelievable mandate for the bjp 163 vote 163 seats but all won by big margin where did the capitulation happen well the bsp as uh, rohit said you know completely evaporated bsp at one time we used to have 10 12% in madhya pradesh they are now to 3% most of that vote that 6 5 6% erosion they all went to bjp the independent votes all went to bjp and that is how they that is how even sp so, even sp yeah but I sp mean, they were in a, yeah, yeah, yeah in like five seats yeah i mean five seats they were like i mean uh, ah, correct influence correct. they had so, Uh, but that is this is the domination so i want you both to talk about uh, the this domination of bjp then talk a little bit about the chief minister and then we'll move to rajasthan and wrap up so i think like if you see like madhya pradesh um <laughs> like if you exclude 2018 if you look at the 2003 the 8 and the 13 results i think bjp used to get in the neighborhood of 150 seats so like we can now probably call that like Madhya, uh, the 18 was a kind of an outlier result. I think there was a lot of anger, like the Mansoor firing, like a lot of people had died. Uh, there was like agrarian distress. I think it, there are a lot of parallels with Gujarat 2017, like certain co- the mm-hmm. agrarian and the farmer communities were upset, and uh, there was Absolutely. also a lot of uh, uh, fatigue with the like the with the uh, b- local BJP leadership uh, back That's then. That's correct. Uh, hmm. So. like you know i think it's just like maybe they are the 2018 was not start of a new trend but maybe was the outlier event and i think mm-hmm. as you said like all that uh, third party independent vote has come back to the bjp and like That's it's right. like uh, status quo and i mean many people like on the day of results call like maybe the mp is like kind of the new bjp uh, sorry the new gujarat of bjp way absolutely they are, they, they are like uh, in doubt and i think even uh bjp did work in the tribal area so some of a lot of the tribal seats that they had lost i think mm-hmm. more towards i believe the the tribal seats are towards the the west and the southern part of the state right uh, uh, uh they were able to win back uh, many of those seats so they did work a lot on like reducing the i think 2018 just looks like to me like a outlier where people were just fed up and they just wanted change you know Uh, no and it happens because when you have a continuous rule of a party whatever the party that is why that, that change that issue happens um, that is one of the reasons why they could have gone for a newer face because bjp was genuinely worried maybe that um, you know is uh, is there a fatigue coming in with shivraj as the um, uh, the chief minister so there is the, the, there is happening but given the fact no but uh, on the fatigue you brought up a good factor i think he, both here and even in rajasthan i think the 
in the posters in the early days of the campaign they didn't have photos of both uh, shivrat singh chauhan and vasundhra raje later on they realized that, that there was on ground popularity of shivrat singh chauhan and they added the pictures of shivrat singh chauhan on the posters so that was also kind of an indicator that at first bjp was reluctant because they thought like the i mean the 15 plus let's say 3 so 18 years of anti incumbency will hurt them but later on they realized that shivrat singh chauhan i mean everybody has now referenced is largely behna scream and uh, mm-hmm. other factors like they he was popular i think mp was i think where women vote had outnumbered the uh, the men vote by i think like 2 or 3 percent so that also may, i think we, there's, there's also one of the other factors that's not talked about a lot is like the women like see like maybe maybe 10 years ago like 15 years ago like the men vote used to outnumber the women vote by at least like 4 5 percent but now i think we are seeing a reversal of the trend so i think capturing the women vote is also important i think if you see that like and parties are actively targeting the women vote so if you see like in karnataka like congress did like did that free bus rides for women and stuff so there were these uh, parties are tra- starting to i mean they realize like once like pm modi with his uh, uh, the ujwala yojana and stuff like they are starting to target women and they see the benefits that uh, women voters are as seen like more reliable voters for uh, both parties like versus the men who might be more fickle and i think one of the st- uh, statistics that i saw for mp was that there was a delta in favor of um, i believe like uh, like women and men voter among various uh, caste was uh, caste groups was like you know like little bit like uh, in favor of bjp but i think scst the women had voted more for bjp and the men i mean all groups like bjp have vote share was higher for uh, it was like plus bjp for both men and women but interestingly mm-hmm. in scst the women had voted for bjp while the men had voted for congress so that was that shows that the on ground uh labharti schemes is making a difference within the scst communities and i mean bjp has a large chunk of the obc what i mean shivrat mm-hmm. singh chauhan is a big obc face i think he was the only obc chief minister i mean now we still have obc chief minister in uh, uh mohan yadav but uh, i think it pretty much consolidates the scst women are voting with you if the obcs are with you then it just creates a lot of trouble for the opposition that like they have to which uh groups or cast the target becomes harder for them you know hmm hmm absolutely yeah. absolutely so <clears throat> i so i will tell you i will tell you uh, this what is interesting is except for the jabalpur belt and some in the ratlam belt bjp has dominated every other area of madhya pradesh except for the tribal and the jabalpur region jabalpur is obviously kamalnath's uh, stronghold another republic in india republic of chhindwara exists there ki <laughs> congress har jagah khatam ho jaye chhindwara mein kamalnath akela khada rahega you know is the only uh, uh, place uh, it, it 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 takes its place in the uh, golden days of congress along with republic of baramati and sharad pawar where they will never lose the pawars never lose so rohit your thoughts on madhya pradesh and the new chief minister uh, that apparently not many knew about mohan yadav uh, who was he was a cabinet minister that but he didn't but bjp is in a uh, uh, in a state of shock so they went from a union cabinet minister vishnu dev sai to a cabinet first time cabinet minister mohan singh mohan dr mohan yadav to a first time mla in, in rajasthan <laughs> so yeah. please explain please rajasthan but uh, interesting you know the eastern uh, north the eastern corn flank of madhya pradesh also by the way is a tribal belt the singroli the siddhi belt and even there the bjp has performed outstandingly well in fact the interesting part is in 2018 they had massively bled seats in that belt so something has clear and if you notice the way a lot of bjp's initiatives to address things like farm distress for instance mm-hmm. they they came up after 2018 interesting especially the pm kisan yojana for instance where they give you uh, you know 6000 a year as farm income support so uh, clearly they had seen and there that the farmer vote uh, angle was clearly a mirror of what was seen in saurashtra and gujarat particularly back in that 2017 mm-hmm. election as well um, so clearly something was amiss that time but uh, kamal nath in his brief stint actually made the farmers even angrier because neither was they able neither was the congress able to sort the farm debt promise that they had uh, come up with not was even fertilizer being arranged frankly 
on time for the farmers there were a lot of videos that time of uh, farmers getting beaten by police uh, mm -hmm. to stand in line while they were waiting for uh, fertilizer that mm -hmm. uh, that was basically due to them from the market because an artificial fertilizer shortage essentially turned up in madhya pradesh at that time so uh, mm -hmm. i mean definitely that uh, segment did come back to the bjp women voters of course is something that a lot of people definitely talk about and uh, largely yojana was of course one of the schemes and even i mean the delivery on the ground definitely mattered right there are free schemes even in states like karnataka and right now the only popular scheme uh, in karnataka that's causing a lot of waste for the congress was the free bus ride scheme but the free bus ride scheme is now turning into a nightmare because buses are not buses are so overcrowded that the other parts of the population just can't Mane, there is it. another problem the rickshaw walas are uh, threatening to do a boycott big time, big time. in fact auto rickshaw walas are absolutely livid with the free bus scheme because women were their basic mm -hmm. were their core passenger in uh, yeah. cities like bangalore so uh, you know so part of the huge, huge chunk of the income in fact so that has really started causing them a lot of problems so mm -hmm. Yeah, but coming back to MP, uh, you know, the government of India for the last six and a half years has been going like all guns blazing in mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to the tribal communities, the Janjatiya communities of India. You know, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like the Eklavya model residential schools and a massive ramp up of those residential schools. You know, they used to be like something like 100 odd and the government has added, I mean, more than 50% within three That's years. That's correct. Hmm. Or you look at the uh, Vandhan Yojana scheme, which has been an apps, which has been a major hit hmm. across tribals uh, all over India, MP included. Or That's you look correct. at you know even uh, something very interesting that the BJP did. It allowed hmm. the tribals to you know not seek a license for brewing their own liquor hmm. in MP. Very few people know that there is a law like that, there is that kind of uh, exemption for the tribals in MP. But that has mm. been very popular, in fact, with the mm. tribal, because mm. uh, there is a tradition of making yeah. your own uh, liquor from Mahua. That's in MP. right. And uh, I mean, uh, there are jokes in MP, in fact, that ये सड़क पे पड़े हुए सारे क्योंकि सब महुआ का नशा करके बैठे हुए हैं. But uh, I mean, it is a cultural uh, tradition that has been respected. Uh, Absolutely. In, uh, so I mean, the the Janjatiya vote has uh, not just in MP but also in Chhattisgarh delivered accordingly. Even hmm. in seats where the Congress was was nearly in defeat, you know, hmm. beyond the, the possibility of defeat, you look at the hmm. areas around Bhopal city, basically, for instance, these are all Gondi belt. This is all Gondi hmm. belt. And hmm. Gondis were never seen to be voting for BJP. But now you see a major sweep happening in that belt. Eastern Singroli hmm. belt, similar case. Uh, the Malwa belt and the, uh, especially the touching areas touching Rajasthan. Hmm. Again, uh, uh, you know, parties like the Bharti Adivasi Party, for instance, were beginning to get some ground there, but they've also lost out with them. Hmm. So you do see this happening that the BJP has managed to get votes from a community that probably did not vote necessarily for them. I think hmm. Gujarat uh, was one example where under uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's tenure as Chief Minister, you saw the tribal vote shifting significantly. Hmm. So you see that being mirrored at one level now in other states as well, ever since he's become prime minister. Mm, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, but but when you talk about the, uh, the the Adivasi party and tribal party, let's move to the other border of Gujarat because that is that is Rajasthan. Because I don't want to us to you know go because I know you guys are on a limited uh, time right now. But we have to talk a little bit about Rajasthan because you know Rajasthan was one state that broadly people got right, but the biggest thing in rajasthan is the 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 chief ministerial choice and so for, so first we'll look at the um, the axis who you know uh, rahul kaval jumps up and down saying we got the exact poll i think they got the inex inexact poll this time uh, from the uh, axis poll because uh, let's let's show they gave congress they gave rajasthan to congress they gave them 90 seats nine, or, and bjp and they essentially predicted a hung assembly that didn't happen BJP got 115 seats. Uh, I, I I was saying that BJP was looking likely to get it. What is bizarre is the 
the threshold the 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 delta of the win so whenever bjp wins in rajasthan the last two times it's gotten more than 130 seats when the congress loses they've gotten about 100 120 but rajasthan always has a 25 to 20 to 25% other vote see even now 41% in 81% has gone to bjp and congress let's look at last time 39 plus 38 75% to bjp and congress right and congress's vote actually has gone up from 39.3 to 39.53 but the bjp has gotten up for 5% and then the independents all these uh, uh, blobs you see from others bharatiya tri uh, tribal party uh, uh, which now has split uh, you know into they call it something else in rajasthan and bharatiya tribal party in gujarat so given the fact and then some rebels propped up who are very close to miss vasundhara rajay herself uh, they cut into a lot of bjp votes so there was a lot of fascinating things but ultimately bjp won and again 48 hours ago uh, this was vasundhara rajay in this but now bhajan lal sharma is the leader of the party uh, most people had not heard about him uh, i think he was seated in the third row and yeah. uh, and even he was surprised uh, but he's been an old party worker right and and whether someone likes it doesn't like it whatever 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 said and done the fact is in bjp it is still pop possible for a ordinary party worker to go from there to cm so a what does that mean and the bjp's risk that they have taken the cm and the deputy cms both all from the jaipur region so your thoughts on that amol pehle aap yeah so uh, i think it's like a generational shift everywhere uh in all three states from raman singh shivraj singh chauhan and vasundhara raj i think this was the most toughest call because vasundhara raj has never got on along with uh, uh, narendra modi and amit shah i think even in 2018 when they were in power uh, it took a very long time for them to nominate a state head for the bar, uh, bjp because they were always fighting and bickering i mean same as in uh, Uh, Madhya Pradesh, like Pasundra Rajesh, posters were not on the election campaign uh, in the beginning. I think they were added during towards the fag end of the campaign because they didn't want to like completely. Uh, I mean, they were also kind in a quandary that they could have lost the election if they like uh, made her very upset. But I think she was accommodated to a certain extent. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you did mention that there were quite a few rebels that she had fielded, where like in a hung assembly, she could have uh, forced herself That's to. Be That's right. Yeah, uh, I mean, e even like uh, out in the end of the uh, election, after the election, there was she was just holding out hope that she would be made the CM finally, but that didn't come to pass. And I think once. the other two cms which were announced before i mean it was kind of writing on the wall that if the, they were going for two new faces i mean i was just thinking like was bjp maybe intentionally selecting two new cms so that she, they could make a case that like like we are going with a cut generation which because if they had retained let's say raman singh or shivraj singh chauhan then it would be harder to argue with raje that like you know that she would like why she is being sidelined while the other two are being continued so it could be it's it's actually a very fascinating take and no one has said it more so i think it is a brilliant point because that that could be it you said the threshold and stuff and but vishnu dev sai i think he was an old face and his time had come so i i don't think there was any by and large controversy about that and mm -hmm. raman singh had lost the last election by such a huge margin um and it there was no evidence to suggest that only raman singh delivered this election mm -hmm. yes raman singh i think we can say one thing for sure that the rss and bjp worked very closely hand in hand and yeah. the rss actually swung the election in many many seats i, I think even like shivraj singh chauhan there is like talk that he might be replaced as the agriculture minister because like one area where mp has grown leaps and bounds is in the agriculture sector like not more on the industrial sector so there is like a thought that he might be replaced as the agriculture minister you know yeah could be i'm not uh, uh, i i'm not denying that mm -hmm. <laughs> of course so uh, but oh, it's, it's very uh, interesting what mohal bhai has said because mm -hmm. uh, now that you think about it none of the better was also were necessarily accommodated uh, when the uh, old guard has got replaced if you think about uh, shivraj singh chauhan's case kailash vijayvargiya narendra tomar uh, 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 i mean while narendra uh, tomar lost right actually uh, no he won he's been made the speaker of the assembly in fact so. oh sorry sorry oh, yeah yeah okay, okay. <laughs> actually there were 
I had read a rumor that Vasundra was offered to be the speaker of the assembly, and I'm like, my goodness, if that happens, <laughs> yeah, she's well, probably well, going to blow a gasket somewhere. Yeah, no, Ganesh, but in MP Ganesh Singh and uh, Prahlad Patel, all hmm. contemporaries of Shivraj Singh Chauhan, none of them essentially even given in that put in that context necessarily. Uh, hmm. Do you see the similar case in Rajasthan? It was already started to happen even before the elections. Gulab Chand Kataria, the pattern of uh, Vasundra. Hmm. Had been moved out to all the way to distant Assam so that Rajasthan pe parchai bhi na pade, <laughs> na? And uh, then uh, basically this became a good case for them to show that okay, I have sidelined your better noir, I am going to sideline you as well. Mm. I guess that's probably one way to you can read it very easily. Uh, mm. But it, uh, but I mean, one cannot get over the reaction of Vasundra Raje on that parchi even now. <laughs> because all of us also reacted the same way when you I'm like you were like hey who yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. I mean, who knows I mean it could be like it could be anything I mean like we're just speculating no I, 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 no I don't think it was any uh, 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 it was a bad reaction I think it was a very natural no, no, reaction no, but, because but, no the, it's a natural reaction but it could be something else I mean it could be like maybe who is the uh, uh, deputy CM or like you know it could be anything else it might not just be just CM name I mean we just everybody just Haan. speculating you know it could but, be Rajnath Singh saying that I think this will Big Boss will win and Vasundra Ji saying okay this is okay Big Boss you can see you know it could be something no but like actually that. I think Haan. one thing we need to talk about is like the uh, cast <laughs> matrix so in MP they have an OBC CM they were SC Haan. deputy CM and a Brahmin deputy CM and a Thakur speaker Haan. no no Thakur sorry uh, a Brahmin speaker right no, no, Tomar is Rajput. So yeah. I mean, sorry, Rajput. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Rajput. No, no, I saw Rajput. Uh, but it's so complicated that even Mohal forgot halfway when he was saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then in Chhattisgarh, we have a STCM, an OBC uh, deputy CM, yeah. and a Brahmin uh, uh, deputy CM, and I guess uh, I think same uh, Rajput uh, speaker. Or I mean, uh, one of those uh, Raja Rajwada wala's days. Yeah. 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 So like they have balanced out all the communities like OBC, SC, ST, Brahmin, Thakur, no, Rajput. This is like, a, this is an assault on all the entire Jain community of India. Gulab Chand Kataria, our dear Jain leader, has been sent away to Assam, and we have zero representation. No, governor banana nahi hai na. Uska he made us made governor. So that also. Haan, matlab, so we 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 Jains are only sh- matlab, shadow. Wo, wo, kya bolte? Showboats of minority in India. Interesting you mentioned this. Uh, Rajasthan, mm-hmm. mein, one, all of them are from the Jaipur cluster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ganesh Bairwa is from Dudu. Uh, Diya Kumari is, I think, from uh, it's called Rajaman, I think, from Jaipur. And uh, Mohan Sharma also from the Jaipur cluster. Jaipur delivered like sent, nearly 100% to the BJP, except for that mm-hmm. one or two Muslim pockets that is there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, BJP is sort of Made, I clearly had made up its mind that if the Jaipur cluster delivers, they'll get everybody to come from Jaipur. Uh, because there are two things that are coming up repeatedly. One is this whole uh, argument that uh, BJP has done a very smart thing by making mm-hmm. a non-dominant caste face as a CM. Because Correct. the traditional Rajput Jat rivalry versus the Gujar Meena rivalry has essentially mm-hmm. been sidelined with this. That's right. Side with this. So hmm. that's an interesting uh, observation many people have been putting forward. But I think the generational change was overdue, one. And uh, secondly, I think at the end of the day, BJP wants fresh faces everywhere. I think that's a, that's becoming even clearer. And uh, at one stage, in fact, it seemed like Diya Kumari was going to be the CM. Because hmm. she got elevated in the affairs of the party just before the hmm. election. So... Uh, I, I mean, they are definitely trying a generation. If you thing. see, her, huh, yeah, but I think also they, if the BJP thinks that they are going to replace a Rani for a Rani and go replace Vasundra Raja with Diya Kumari, that royalty, it's not going to work because exactly. Vasundra's connect exactly. was different. Also, the history of Vasundra and Rajmata Vijay Raja Sindhya is a very different history of the BJP. So, yeah. uh, so, and and I have to say one thing, but I personally think Jyotiraditya will be accommodated. I think he he has. Worked worked very closely with the BJP and Mr. Modi likes to see 
see you know him going selflessly i think civil aviation is a sector very close to mr modi's heart um, and big big uh, things are happening just as we are recording today surat was approved as an inter newest international airport in india air india flights to dubai has been announced as well that is actually mm. going to be a big job, big uh, set back to mumbai's diamond uh, thing because a lot of the surat diamond lobby used to fly out of mumbai that's actually going to and and, and it's high time like i i amdabad and surat and all have been for years and years have been being sort of the step brotherly treatment they like nahi nahi mumbai ka importance is an airport nahi sab airport ka aane do yaar everybody have, let every airport have this. so with what jyotiraditya has been doing i think you are going to see a expansion of international airports across india right now yeah yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, good that you brought this up. Uh, Surat, in fact, is also close to IFSE, the financial gift city, rather, right? So, uh, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to be having this new airport. Sorry, more. I think, you know, I think one br- good thing you brought up, and I wanted to highlight, is like the fresh new faces. I think, I mean, as Adit knows, since uh, Modi's uh, term in like as chief minister, he has re- regularly dropped like uh, one third of the MLAs. Uh, to beat anti incumbency i mean it was like funny like i remember like i did last time in 2019 i had like i was telling on twitter that like uh, or x as this and now sorry that they he will drop 100 M- uh, mps and like i mean a uh, lot of people mm. didn't believe it i think they did drop more than 100 mps so i think one interesting thing is this rotation from mps to mlas so i think if you remember like 21 bjp mps which is like a huge chunk of it if you think of it they were asked to fill the elections so they are beating out anti incumbency because this 21 mp is now they will be mla so they are not going to be so you automatically if you are dropping let's say out of 300 100 mps 21 ko you accommodate so there is less uh, anger among those folks and their supporters ki bhi unko at least mla ki tarah accommodate maybe they it's not a, as prestigious a position as an mp and then 12 of the 21 also won so 12 mm-hmm. of those 21 have been accommodated as mlas so like you can say okay now uh, basically i mean on uh, uh, let's say out of the i think this three states combined like i think there are like 61 lok sabha seats so you can say okay 21 out of 61 lok sabha seats you already have a uh, new faces lined up so you are beating anti incumbency plus you're keeping them happy by putting them in the vidhan sabha versus But the to- lok sabha to be honest mohal i won't i won't look at it much in detail because is um because it's only 3 months to go for the lok sabha so some of them might come back as lok sabha faces they might just have been dropped because there is nothing no real business to take care of 370 pass ho gaya mr modi is happy ab the only bigger business is ram mandir ka kya hoga january mein and then we'll be into full election mode so now this is going to be uh, sort of a lame duck phase where there is just going to be government ka thoda kaam hoga i don't see poli- i see policies being announced i don't see policies being implemented right now no but like Haan. i mean modi sir you know like they never leave anything to chance so like they will if there are mps like they will definitely i think drop like 80 to 100 mps for sure i mean that's like the modi policy like even when he was in gujarat cm so this helps like say if you are telling 100 people you don't contest at all but if you are let's say accommodating like those as mla is that at least it reduces the anger and the like the infighting right so is like this rotating but I mean, you have a valid point they might be asked to fight the lok sabha elections again but what if they are not then probably you took care of by just rotating them to the mla position you know mm-hmm. yeah no that's a fair point and uh, i mean coming back to rajasthan uh, the number of candidates that vasundhara faction was able to get as independent really mm-hmm. got that out mm-hmm. uh, i mean uh, now that the face is so clear i am very curious to see how vasundhara raje uh, shivraj singh chauhan and even raman singh to some extent get accommodated Raman Singh mm-hmm. was already kept on the sideline in Chhattisgarh, so probably that the answer is very straightforward in their case. But in the case of these two, because these two have shown that they can dent if it comes, if push comes to shove, the BJP's chances in the states. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, Shivraj Singh Chauhan clearly has not had a bad equation with the the centre uh, with the duo. But Sundar Raji, of course, has never had a very comfortable relationship. I'm being very polite here, of course. But uh, mm-hmm. let's see how they how the two get accommodated because. if their candidates were getting tickets clearly there is a plan that they, that is on the cards so 2024 you might even see them contesting lok sabha elections 
and uh, mm. i mean even okay. you never nadda's term is coming up so there was a rumor that maybe he might be accommodated as jp nadda's successor or as agriculture minister yeah. no i don't think so i i don't think the bjp president is going to be someone who is very uh, uh, sort of po- popular and before people start jumping up and down uh, at narendra modi because i i find this a lot of atal ji's and i count myself as atal ji's fan club uh, a proud member of that a lot of the but the, a lot of erstwhile people who say oh we loved atal ji but love to shit on mr modi will always say oh he enabled leaders guess who the bjp president was during his time khushabhau thakre jana krishna murthy the you know the bjp leader who ensured a sweep of tamil nadu no there was no, it is very common very common that you have your best faces ha huh, political power yes you give your best faces political power and stuff and i would like to see them getting cabinet ministers uh, thing but the party president it is always going to be a relatively uh, uh, a face that is not going to win you elections or something because you need people like those in chief ministerial positions always going to be an organization man backroom guy uh, stuff like that always going to be a rajya sabha member unfortunately the bjp has been having a problem of administrative talent at the lack of administrative talent at the center i mean hmm. political talent is one thing but uh, a large chunk of your current uh, cabinet members and ministerial mem- ministerial uh, body members frankly don't inspire any confidence so i mean they do need people who can really pull the reins for them so i mean it would be good to have a couple of these faces at the center as well i'm not advocating hmm. for them please i've been getting those brick bags so i am not advocating for them my point is that it does make sense to get somebody who has administrative experience to come and help at the center for sure like amit shah was brought in right so why not these two yeah ob- i mean there, there i mean Vas- and vasundhara has been a cabinet minister i would in fact be yeah. very interested in seeing if what what shivraj's role could be and stuff and you never know that may happen do i mean vasundhara's case is also blunted by the fact that her brother is already Uh, a, a minister, so you never know. No, no, But not brother, case. nephew. 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 Sorry, nephew. My uh, brother. Brother, if he comes, then there will be some tantric, tantric exercise going on. So. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> bye. But yeah. Before, before, and before so, now, I get cancelled by the tantrics. I was not. I was yeah, just yeah, making yeah. a joke. Nothing no, but, else. But uh, you never know. Let's see. Huh. I mean, it might just happen in the twenty in the post twenty twenty four election phase that these two might also be. maybe as a speaker one of them maybe as ministers we never know and bjp is known to also bend the rule when it fe- when it finds it convenient right um, there was this uh, uh, kalraj mishra who was actually kept on as minister despite wrap up i mean we are at almost at an hour and a half here thank you guys for joining in but before we wrap up any recommendations for our uh, viewers listeners mohal you first rohit and then rohit and then i'll see <coughs> my Yes, yeah, so a couple of recommendations. I mean, I know like a lot of people already watched it. Like one I watched just this week, like the Sam Bahadur, just a fantastic biopic, biopic on Field Marshal Sam Manekshaw. I mean, maybe they could have shown a little bit more of the 1971 war, but it, there was like more uh, like personal uh, incidents with him. And the second one is the Railway Man. I mean, since you're talking about Madhya Pradesh, I mean, uh, it also like a. a, a Pictureization of like the the role that the railway uh, officials in Bhopal played after the Bhopal gas tragedy and how they helped like get many people to see. And it was like a very fictionalized account, but I mean when you read some of the accounts online, it's like uh, like real acts of bravery to uh, help many people get to safety and stop trains from coming into Bhopal. You know. Uh, so. fascinating oh i loved railway man i saw it and i absolutely yeah. loved it i mean the oh, infan khan's uh, oh, son sorry, no. i mean we oh, have to oh. give him a shout out like i mean he is like very grounded to he's not like the the like the star kids or the nepo kids in like archies i mean you know uh, he's like much i mean i watched this fantastic interview i think that like and he looks very good he gave a lot of credit to like kk man he said like, he was acting like a father figure like that was during the shooting his father passed away and uh, he gave a lot of credit to kk man who acted like a father figure you know so i mean he looks like a star in the making you know absolutely absolutely he does um rohit bhai your recommendation and and uh, i always say there is only than... one khan for me irfan khan yeah yeah no more than tv recommendations tv dekhne ka mujhe time to milta nahi hai so i'll give you book recommendations one is this uh, book uh, written by a former bjp uh, leader got turned former governor of meghalaya tathagat roy which is the biography of shama prashad mukherjee uh, mm. fairly detailed 
uh, amazing insights into what it took for Shama Prashad Mukherjee to ensure that Bengal would be divided uh, mm-hmm. so that a portion of it is part of India and the Hindus of Bengal can get some uh, relief from, uh, you know, not becoming part of an Islamist project. Uh, the second book, of course, is also somewhat linked to that same thing, Partition. Mm-hmm. This is written by a man called G.N. Bali. Now it can be told. Uh, please get your hands on this. This is about how partition happened in Punjab. and uh, The mm-hmm. events running up to it. Uh, the background of cities like Lahore, uh, Amritsar, Gurdaspur, Lyalpur, must read and understand how or what basically you know was lost when partition happened. And the tragedy, the human tragedy that unfolded. So, yeah, and this yeah, absolutely bit, somewhat somber uh, recommendations, but uh, I mean, no, I no, it's it brilliant. Really yeah, no, no, brilliant. Tata is uh, his. Uh, I've, I've interacted with him many times. Even met him a couple of times in Houston, and his uh, uh, his analysis on um, uh, Shama Prasad Mukherjee is quite brilliant. Uh, so that's uh, I would recommend endorse that uh, book uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, my recommendation, apart from that, is apart, th- it was going to be the Railway Men that I saw, but then I also watched a show called The Freelancer by Neeraj Pandey. Uh, the last part, second part of it came out, and it's about uh, b- b- based about a book about an ISIS, but then also a lot about how these some of these women uh, in India and England were married into um, Islamist households, and then they were transported to ISIS essentially to be mm-hmm. child carrying machines. And <clears throat> it's about how someone struggles and how they you know figure it out and stuff like that uh watch it because it is it is a very a it's a very well made show it's neeraj pandey so you can it has that gripping quotient it has that international spy espionage thriller so you will want to finish that entire show what but platform it's, is it on it's on Hot, disney plus hotstar or okay, in america okay. it's hulu um okay. but the reason why you should watch it is also because of how skillfully uh, the problem of ISIS has been told. And there is a character of Anupam Kher who is like a, uh, a, a IT guy, but he's also giving these speeches about what, how badly uh, uh, ISIS has infiltrated this, and, um, and especially in Europe and stuff. So it's 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 well worth um, seeing. So that would be our recommendations for this week. Uh, thank you guys for joining. This was a marathon podcast, but what uh, I think we barely scratched the surface, but we'll do more uh, of this very soon. Uh, till then, uh, please like, share, subscribe to Mind Makers. Follow them. Follow Rohit and Mohal on Twitter, on on X, on Facebook, whatever platform you choose. Uh, write to us what you thought about this we'll be back next week with more till then it's goodbye thank you